Hello and welcome back to the Yi2 tutorial series and in this video we are going to look at routing and URL creation. Now this is something that I see gets asked about a lot on the forums. People saying how do we do this, my URL rules are not working and everything else. Um, and I think I just want to recommend before people ask questions on the forum um, in order for people not to dislike you. Um, the two things I'd recommend. The first is please make sure that you read these uh, Year 2 guides before posting a question. Most of these guides, uh, they're pretty decent. They've got all the information in there. They're quite long. Um, and it's not usually too difficult to find out um, how to do something. Um, and the second recommendation is that people keep things simple when they first start using Yi or in fact any other framework. It's very easy to start trying to do something complicated, but that just makes it harder because you have more things to go wrong. So by starting uh, with simple things and then working your way up to more complicated things, then you'll be more comfortable with the framework. Uh, and you'll be able hopefully to do a lot more with it without just jumping straight onto the forum and asking how to do something um, quite straightforward. So when we look at the whole areas of URLs, historically a website was really just a collection of static pages. So you had a URL that looked something like that, that was the domain uh, which would point to a particular folder on your file system. And then under that file system, you would have perhaps a folder. And then inside that folder, you would have an HTML file. And that's fine. But in Yi, as with many other or perhaps all other MVC frameworks, this doesn't really work anymore. Because if we look at our project, we don't actually have um, a folder called site. Uh, and we don't have an index.html inside that folder because that folder doesn't even exist. So if we were to try and visit this particular site, it obviously wouldn't work. But we kind of want things to look like that or perhaps in MVC we're happy not to have the extension. You know, maybe we just want it to look like that. But again, that's not actually going to work here because at the minute there's no way for the web server to know what to do with this request because it's going to point to a non-existing file. So let's look at how um, Yi is set up by default. Uh, keep looking this up. Right, so if we look at the normal web route, that's fine. It seems to be working. And that's because by default, um, this is actually happening. That is being added automatically by the web server. And in this case, the web server is actually pointing to this folder right here. And this folder has an index.php in it. So that's all great and that's gonna work fine. But what happens when I want to go to somewhere else, let's say for instance, I wanna to go to the about page and I click here. Now notice that again, underneath this web route, there isn't a, a, a site folder. There is no about folder. There is only this index.php, which we call a bootstrap file, and which is responsible for loading everything else that's needed for this URL. So by default, when you first install Yi, you get this little format where you're still pointing to index.php, but you have a query string, which is quite straightforward there. And then after the query string, we have a parameter called r, which is root, and the root equals site slash about. And in this case, the slash character has been a URL encoded because you shouldn't have them in a URL normally. So that looks all really kind of nasty. Um, and we don't, we don't really like that. We don't want to use that. So let's work out how we can initially look like some, uh, make, make the URL look slightly nicer, making some basic changes. Now, the first thing I want just to mention quickly is this is the index bootstrap file. So this is this file here. And what I've done is I have commented out the debug functionality just for, the, just for now. And the reason I've done that is because uh, with one of these settings, you're, you are able to redirect every request to the same page. And if you have the debug toolbar down in the bottom, then you end up looking like you've got the same page coming up twice. And that was a bit confusing. So I've just um, disabled debugging for now, just so that that doesn't happen and it doesn't confuse you when you see it. 
but really um, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff in the configuration here and most of it is going to be done under the url manager so this url manager is at the same level as db which means it is underneath the components uh, section of config and the very first thing that almost all of us will probably want to do is to enable pretty url and what pretty url does quite simply if we go back here and we go back here again is rather than using a query string parameter this now uses something called path info and path info looks a bit strange but really it's the part of the url that comes after the target file and before any query string that might come you know after that so that's called the path info and the thing that's nice about it is you're allowed to use slashes in the path info so it looks quite neat um, and we get kind of the format that we're looking for here um, straight away without really doing anything else so we're just going to leave that using um, the path info for now and we're going to look at how we create these routes so let's dive back into our uh, configuration here now the basic gist of the url manager is that when you type in some kind of root so something like this on the end of your url the url manager is responsible for working out how to turn that root into the target that is the action on the controller that you want to call and it does that in a, a couple of different ways and it depends how you've set up your system so by default you will notice that this works without having any rules and that's because there's a default rule that says if there are no other rules then the first word there is the controller and the second word there is the action and ye will do that automatically for you which is why this currently works fine and you notice here I don't have any rules in play at the minute they're all commented out um, but if I add rules in then what these rules will do will be to say what happens when that root comes in it will try and match one of the rules if it doesn't match one of the rules then what happens depends on the value of this um, property here so first of all let's just kind of ignore that and let's just add in a single rule here so what we're saying here this is what it's going to look like on the url and this is the controller and action um, that's going to be invoked as a result of that so if we look back here first thing to note is that site about still works because that's the default rule but if i go in here and i type books you'll notice that even though this isn't a valid normal route so the the normal route would be book index so that works the same way but I've introduced a new route which says if we go back here if you see the word books in the URL then redirect to book slash index and we might want to do that because we might think that's slightly neater um, and later on we'll see that that's quite useful for things like web API's and stuff like that where we might want to follow a naming convention but notice that all we've done here is we've added a new rule and that rule has been added in addition to the default rule however if we say that we want strict parsing the behavior of this is going to change and what this now means is that the default um, rule is going to be disabled and the only rules that are going to work are the rules that I've defined in here so if we now go back and run this one again that's going to work because that's in in our rule there but if I go to site about that's now not going to work anymore why is it not going to work because the default rule has been disabled by switching that to true and there is no rule currently in here to actually handle the site about root so that's what enable strict parsing is about it's saying do I want to use the default root as well as all of the rules that I add in so we'll come back and look at some more rules in a second I just want to introduce um, a couple of other properties and uh, now these uh, you've got to be careful are actually defined outside of components and I'm looking at these two here so they're not defined under the URL manager they're defined in the top level configuration and they kind of 
uh, do probably what you would expect. Now, default root, I've just chosen. Um, oh, wrong one. I've just chosen a random a destination. But what the default root means is, if I don't specify a root, where should I go? Now, obviously, by default, that's going to go to site slash index because that's what we would normally expect to do. But if I actually get rid of that and run that, oh, let me just turn my turn my default rule back on. Okay, even though I haven't got a root on the end of it, by setting the default root, I've said by default I want to come into the books index page. Um, and again, you're possibly not going to use that um, very often, but you might use it, for instance, if you're adding maybe a second site controller in and perhaps you want to change over to using the new site controller. You could do that just by changing the default route, perhaps. Um, another one is catch all. Um, and what catch all does is it uh, redirects every single route uh, to the destination here. And again, I've just used book index as a, an example, but it means that whatever I try and go to, all of it is going to go to the same page. Uh, and again, a, a classic kind of uh, example of using that would be if your site is under maintenance, you might want to redirect all routes to the maintenance page. And so instead of changing all the rules, you can just set this in one place um, and that will catch every single URL. So that's all fine. Those two you might not use very often, but again, notice that they're at the top level of configuration and they are not under the URL manager. Um, that tripped me up a couple of times. So now let's forget about those and let's go back to this. So the first thing I want to look at is um, creating URLs. So there's there's two sides to this really. The first is routing, and that means how do I turn a URL here into the route to the controller and the action? So that's one direction. Uh, and the other direction is supposing I actually want a URL, a hyperlink, let's say for instance, that's um, going to go to the book slash index. How do I actually do that without having to hard code the whole domain and everything else into my links. I obviously don't want to put all of that in there because if I then move this site to a different domain, then everything's going to break. So we use uh, something called URL colon colon two. So it's a static method two, and that's found uh, in ye helpers URL. And the first thing to mention about these URLs is that there are a lot of overloads available. Um, so you've got to be a bit careful. You'll notice that the, the main use of two uses an array syntax, but there are also uh, other ways of using two that don't include an array, uh, but use a string as the first argument. Um, they're all documented or pretty much all documented here in the guide. So by all means, read through that for some of the more complicated ones. But what I've done here is I've created a page that demonstrates uh, some of the different uses of URL2. And if we view that in here, just so that's a bit neater. So if when you use URL2, you have an empty string, then that equates to the current action on the current controller. So that's like saying, I want a URL to myself. Um, not sure if that's very useful, but it's there. If you have a string with no slashes in it as the first argument to your array, then the system will assume that you want to stay in the same controller, but you want to point to a different action on the same controller. So our current action is roots, but by putting in about, we will point to site about instead. If we have a forward slash uh, within the string that we passed in, but we don't have a slash at the start, then normally if we were inside a module, then this would be appended to the end of our module. So if our module was called say um, admin and we put this, then the URL would actually be admin slash about slash details. 
Now, in this example here, I'm not inside a module. I'm, a, I'm up at the site level. So this doesn't actually look any different than this example below, which says that if I have a forward slash at the front, then this will anchor this link right back to index.php um, and book slash index would normally go to book slash index here. But because I added that rule earlier, which says books um, in here, it's actually automatically changed that for me. But let's just get rid of that a second and make that a little bit clearer. So you notice now that if I go to slash book slash index, that goes to book slash index at the site level. So these two appear to do the same thing, but this one would do something different if you called URL2 inside a module. Uh, the other thing to notice as well when we're calling two is that we can pass in parameters as well. And if we pass in parameters as additional arguments, then they will be turned into a query string for us. So that's how we can look at a specific book by passing in the ID. And then if we look at uh, this example, it's the same as the one above, but in this case, we can also add a fragment to the end of it. So we can say, I want to go to the content section within that page. Uh, and then a couple of others that um, may or may not be um, useful to you. If you add true as the second argument, now notice this isn't inside the array. This is as a second argument after the array then true actually returns the full absolute URL rather than the uh, relative URL back to index.php. So for instance, that might be useful if you're putting a link inside an email, you know, that kind of thing, where you actually need the absolute um, path and you get that with true. Uh, and another um, way of getting a similar thing, but again, notice with the overloading, that's a Boolean. This is now a string. And if it's a string, what URL2 will do is it will use that to be the protocol for your URL. So that's now HTTPS instead of HTTP. There's also something else we can do with aliases. It's maybe not really particularly useful, but it might be in case of um, if you're repeating the same URLs um, quite often throughout the site, you can call ye set alias, um, call it at books and call it whatever you like with an at symbol. Um, and then again, what we can do here is we can pass that alias in and that then equates to book slash index. So a couple of things we can do with URL too, but what's important um, to note here is that using URL two uses your set of rules to work out exactly how to turn your argument here um, into the URL that comes out the other end. Um, and we're going to look at that in a second. Um, while we're here, we might briefly mention um, the fact that at the minute, the URL still contains index.php. Now, in, in a lot of cases, you might be thinking, well, I kind of really want that because that's much neater. I don't really like seeing index.php. Now, if you do that, the important thing to know is you can't configure that just inside ye. And the reason goes back to our original point is that the web server will not be able to find this file. And so if you try that, you're going to get a 404 um, and it's not going to work. So if you do want to remove the PHP, then there's a couple of things you need to do. The first of them is you will need to configure your web server. Uh, and in Apache, you'll do that with .ht access. In IIS, you will have to use a rule, a rewrite rule. Um, although the rewrite rules do allow you to import HT access content, not everything, but, but enough. And what that allows you to do is you, you're telling the web server, if you're asked to find a file and you can't find it, then call index.php. And by doing it that way in the web server, then you don't see the index.php up here, um, but it does mean that the web server needs to know what to point to. So you can do that in .ht access in Apache. You can do it in a rewrite rule in IIS. But if you don't have access to do that or you don't want to do that just yet and there's no reason to do it too early on, then you just need to include PHP in the URL. If you do remove index.php, then this is another thing that you'll probably want to set false. Uh, 
by setting that to false, it means that these URLs that get generated by URL2 also won't include index.php in there. So if you hide that in your web server, then you probably want to set that to false as well. Otherwise, you will undo most of your hard work. So that's um, how we hide index.php if we want to. Um, let's now dive into how these rules work. So I'm going to be kind of darting between these different rules just to kind of make some statements. But uh, first thing to note is there is a simple format where you have a pattern in the URL and you have a destination. Um, and it's also worth quickly noting that if you need to do anything more complicated, there is also the advanced way of specifying a rule. And notice that is array syntax in PHP 5.4, I think, and above. So in that array syntax, that pattern there is that first bit. The root is that second bit. But we can also add other properties like suffix and defaults um, and other things in there. So a lot of the time we can use the simple format, but sometimes we need to use the advanced format. So that's the first thing to note. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the first bit is what we're matching on the URL. And obviously that's the bit after um, index.php. So we oh, control save and F5. Um, so we don't need to specify index.php at the start. However, we can if we want. So we can put in even, you know, the whole URL if we want that. Um, I think this works anyway, without doing anything else. .php, so, okay, with any luck. No, that doesn't work. Uh, or I think it maybe it's even that. There is a format here that allows you to use um, the server names, but I can't remember exactly what it is. So I apologize for that. It is in the guide. So if you need to include the server name in there, the domain name in there, you can do that. So rules can match patterns. In this case, that is a specific match. So I'm matching the word books. But the problem with that is if I've got in this case, I've got a book controller, I've got an author controller, I've got a site controller. And of course, I could have 10, 20, even 30, perhaps different controllers for different things. And I obviously don't want to effectively do the same rule, you know, loads of times. I don't really want to be doing, say, this uh, because obviously that's going to get very long and very boring. And of course, as every request that comes in is going to have to go through all of these rules to find a match. So clearly the more rules you have, and especially if you've got patterns in them as well, um, regular expressions and the like, then all of that's going to slow down your site. So one of the things that we can do is we can match things more generically. Uh, we call it parameterization. And if you notice here, what I've done is I've put in some triangle brackets uh, and I've given that block a name, a placeholder if you like. And what this allows me to do is allows me to make a match in the URL for something that ends in the letter S. But when I find something that ends in the letter S, take out that first bit in triangle brackets and I'm going to then reference that on this side. So as an example, I've now commented out that first books, but if I do this, notice it still works. And that's because that will match book. That matches the S on the end of books. And then I've redirected that to be book without the S and the index action. And the reason that's useful is because that will also match author. So authors does the same way if it finds authors um, then it will uh, go to author slash index. Notice that that's not necessarily ideal because um, sites, oh, well, sites is okay because it goes to site slash index. Um, but of course, one of the problems is what happens if I have uh, a controller that happens to end in an S. So I don't know, success controller then there's all kinds of you know problems that could happen there which I might not want to happen but in general we can parameterize it and that enables us um, to be quite specific now the other thing we can do here is we can be a bit more specific and we can add additional parts to the path 
So let's look at this next rule. We'll leave that one in there and we'll say that if I have a name followed by an ID number, then go to the view action of that controller and you say, well, what are you going to do with the ID? Well, any placeholder here in triangle brackets that is not referenced in the root gets passed in as a query string to that action. So let's show you an example. So if I go to uh, book and I assume I have book one. No, how many books have I got? Let's see, uh, ID is two. So if I go to book slash two, it's actually gone into the correct place. What's happened is it's gone, okay, I've matched a book and I've matched an ID of two. So I'm gonna to go to book slash view and I'm gonna pass in the ID as a query string parameter. Now, as it happens, ye controllers take their ID numbers from the query string in, in normal use. So that actually works automatically. But if it didn't, you would obviously have to grab that ID inside your action from the uh, query string, um, from the get param, the get array, and then you could use that to load the correct um, item. And again, notice that this is fairly generic, so this will work for books, authors, or anything else. Um, but that's that's all kind of quite nice and hopefully quite easy to see. Um, and one thing that's worth mentioning, I guess, at this point is that the rules are. Um, evaluated in order so what will happen is it will say does the url match this if it doesn't does it match this no what about that no what about this no etc so you need to be a bit careful if you have lots of rules sometimes you might accidentally catch um, a general rule before a more specific rule so you have to be careful in the ordering so if you had a specific one for books that did something different than this general rule, you need to make sure that that rule appeared first so that that will match before this one. Um, otherwise, what you'll find, as you often do, is that things don't quite behave as you expect. So you need to know um, that they're run uh, in order. And um, let's look at a kind of a couple of other examples of the types of things you can do in these rules. So one of the things that you can do here let's uh, in the advanced um, syntax let's just comment out these other ones so we don't get confused one of the possible options is a suffix now what this means is if for some reason you want the pages to look like HTML pages uh, or PHP or anything else you can put whatever suffix you want then by doing this what actually happens is let's now go let's reset this and if I look for books You'll notice now that the URL that gets generated has an HTML on the end of it. Now this is not this is HTML, but the page itself is not an HTML page. But by using that suffix, um, we can make it look like an HTML page. Obviously, in this instance, we would probably also want to do the web server stuff to get rid of index.php. Um, but this, for different reasons, this might be useful. So if our client needs to know what type of file it is using the extension you can use html it might make certain things work properly that wouldn't otherwise work just with you know that kind of syntax um so you can put a suffix on the end of it um not necessarily massively useful but um in some cases that will be useful um another thing um that we might as well mention here while we're kind of looking at these rules is if we look at this here, let's just dump that into something that's a bit more easy to see. Um, so this is a placeholder from our rule there. And we're kind of looking at thinking, well, all of a sudden this is kind of looking a bit nasty. So let's just split this up a bit and see what's going on. Um, so the triangle brackets, are really just to say this is the placeholder so that marks the kind of start and end um, of the placeholder id is the name that we've given to it so when if we want to use it here we would have to reference it in this way like this but if we don't reference it on the right hand side as we've already said it will be passed into the query string with a name of id 
uh, and our action can then take it from there. This colon then says that we're going to tell the rule what format we're going to use for our, our ID number. So if we look at this, you might notice, you might not, that this is a regular expression. And this is a fairly simple regular expression which says I want a number and I'm going to have one or more of those. So that's going to match, that's going to match, that's going to match, uh, that isn't going to match because they aren't numbers. Backslash D is a shortcut, um, sorry, backslash D is a shortcut for a number. So that's the same as 0 to 9. Um, and the plus just means one or more. So that's what that is. Um, we can use uh, any kind of regular, regular expression, but we've got to be kind of a bit careful. So backslash W would be a word character. So that's letters, numbers, underscores. That might work for things like the controller name and stuff. Um, but in this case, we've got a fairly simple rule that says book, view, and a number. Um, and if you find that, go to the view. So let's try this one. Uh, book, view, uh, two. Oh, I forgot my little forward slash in there. Okay, that works as we would expect it to. Now, clearly, if the ID was ADS or something, that's not going to work. Why? Well, first of all, it's not going to match this rule anymore because our rule says that the ID has to be a number, and that is clearly not a number, it's some letters. And then obviously it's going to drop through. In this case, it's going to hit the default um, route. And the default route is also not going to find this because there is no route set up. Um, the default rule will only handle stuff like that. But in this case, that's not going to work because it's missing the ID number. So we can use regular expressions. And we're not really using them for security. One of the reasons we're using them is to be able to have multiple rules that are maybe quite similar, um, but don't tread on each other's toes. Now, what do I mean? If I just did this, uh, let's say I wanted view ID, but then what if I wanted something like this? Now, clearly in this case, we have a problem because if we try to type in book view all, actually this matches that because ID just becomes all. Um, and in this case, it wouldn't hit this, which is probably what we want it to hit. Now, in this case, we could, um, assuming these went to different things, um, let's just say that went to book uh, index or something. Um, now, in this case, we could just reorder the rules and we could attempt to match this one first. And only after that doesn't match, we can match that one. So that would actually fix this problem. But there are similar um, issues you can run into when you've got this kind of multi-level, you know, controller and ID and stuff like that, is you can end up with URLs hitting the wrong rules. And so that's why this kind of syntax is very useful, because what we're saying here is if we typed view slash all, then it's definitely, we well, can try it, it's definitely not going to hit this rule anymore because all is not going to match that regular expression so that's quite cool so if we go book view all we've gone to the index if we do book view two we've gone to the individual book so we're using regexes here just to provide us with a way of determining which of the rules um, that we're trying to use so that's kind of really helpful. I uploaded a video recently about regular expressions. If you've never come across them, then you kind of need to know about them, at least in their basic form, in order to do this stuff. Um, otherwise, it all sounds very confusing. It doesn't make any sense. So please check out that video. It's um, on my account. It's the video before this one. Um, uh, and otherwise, regularexpressions.info is a website that's got loads and loads of stuff about these. You won't need to make complicated regular expressions for using these rules, um, but again, it might allow you to do something um, slightly more complicated if you need to. So that's that. Uh, another example of our advanced pattern is by using the advanced pattern, we, as well as setting suffix, and we can ignore that, um, we can set defaults for our parameters. So in this case, this pattern we said was the first bit of the array. The root is the second bit of the array. But in this case, if I don't provide an ID 
um, in my URL, then the default will say I'm going to set an ID of one. In fact, let's set it to two because we don't have an ID of one. Uh, and we're going to go to book and we're going to go to view. So let's change that just to be book, just to be a bit clearer. So what we're kind of saying here is if I want to go to book, um, I've not provided any more specifics. So it's going to say, well, use this as a rule, but set the default to be two. Um, now, what, what would actually work here is if I put book, um, or it wouldn't work because there isn't a book of one. But what's going to happen now is it's still going to match this rule because now I've got a book and I've actually provided an ID. So it's going to go to book slash view, but it's going to pass this ID of one. And in this case, there isn't a book of one. So that's going to give me a four, of, uh, not four or four, but uh, page does not exist. There isn't there isn't an item for book one. Um, whereas if I don't do it, it's going to give me a default of two uh, and that's going to load up just fine. So um, defaults are another thing that's quite handy. Um, and then one last thing in terms of rules that might be quite useful is that you can specify the HTTP verb to use in order to further filter which rule gets evaluated. So in this case, let's have a look at this. Um, if I do, well, let's just, uh, I'm just trying to think of a way of demonstrating this. So let's just say if we post a book, then we want to do book, we want to create one. Whereas if we get to book, we want to, uh, let's just, do, let's just do index okay so if I go in here and I do book that's a get request because um, I'm in the browser and I press return in, in the string so that has matched the index page so that has actually hit that rule if I posted to exactly the same URL it would actually create a new book um, and this is one of the things that's really handy for API type stuff because in API you often use your um, your verb to define what's going on so you can use exactly the same endpoint and you could do you know this kind of stuff you could do um, ID backslash D plus you could do this kind of stuff um, so there's lots of different ways um, that you could do this uh, get could uh, do view and post I don't know update or something so you can use the verbs uh, in there as well as part of the rules and like I say that's really quite helpful for that so um, now that we've seen the rules and we've kind of seen the initial um, initial use of this URL too what's important to realize now is that when you use um, the two it will use these rules to work out exactly what to present in, in the URLs. Now let me give, give an example. This was one I think we used before. I've got a rule here that says um, if I type in books, I'm going to go to the index page for books, which is that, which is fine. Now what's interesting to note here is if I go back to my um, roots page, my demonstration page, um, if you look here, I've actually said I want to go to the index action of book and notice that what's happened is it's looked through the rules this time in reverse order and said effectively you've asked for that. So I'm going to give you that. So notice there that we haven't got slash book slash index, which is what I've asked for. We've got slash books. So the rules are used to actually work out what this function should return when you're creating your hyperlinks and that kind of makes sense because if we go to books we know that it's going to go to book index so really this is just closing the loop um, by using those rules and in the same way that that works um, these type of things also work so in this case if i do that again and refresh this page you'll notice that it still works and still does exactly the same thing but again, it's been clever enough to say, well, you've asked for something slash index. In my case, I've asked for book slash index. So I'm going to generate your URL that uses whatever you put there, in my case, book, and then with the letter S on the end. So again, that's generated books. So that works really well. Uh, and again, the same works with this type of stuff. If you ask for controller slash view, 
Notice here that you have to provide an ID number in order to generate this one, but um, I think, do we do a view? Yep. So if we refresh this, you'll notice again that this one has now changed because I asked for book view and that's going to say, yeah, you got one of those and it's going to create book slash and it's going to expect an ID number. And if we look at the ID number there, we've passed that in in the array. So again, that's formed us our rule um, to say book slash two. Now, question, what happens if we don't provide an ID number? So if we go to, uh, let's change that one. And so if we do book view, but we don't provide a number. Okay, notice that that hasn't created one of these. Why not? Well, because we didn't provide an ID number. So in that case, it hasn't matched this rule because it's not been able to actually fill in that piece of information. So it didn't match that. It didn't match that. It's gone back to the default rule, which just says if you want a controller and an index, you get uh, sorry, a controller and action, you get a controller and an action. So you've again just kind of be careful do something simple to begin with as you're kind of looking to do this stuff um, but be aware that those rules affect the routing as well as the url creation um, so i think that's it that's all we need to cover in this um, like i said i guess in summary you've really got um, kind of one section of configuration that's quite significant which is the rules you will probably have that switched on to true anyway. Most of the rest of this stuff doesn't even work, um, or certainly some of it doesn't work if that's set to false. So turn that on. This determines whether the uh, rules are the only thing that will be evaluated. If that's set to true and you don't have a rule, then you'll get a 404. If that's set to false, which is the default, then it will try the rules. And if none of those match, it will use the default routing. Show script name is used if you want to hide your index.php, but remember you need to do the configuration on the server. And then inside your rules, you have simple rules, you have uh, more advanced rules. The advanced rules allow you to set suffix and defaults. You can use HTTP verbs if you like, uh, and you can parameterize these with optional regular expressions in uh, to enable you to more precisely um, grab those things. And then lastly, you've got these two um, properties that are set up in the configuration um, that allow you to do a couple of um, general config settings. So hopefully that explains pretty much um, all there is to know. As I said before, please go and visit the guide about uh, runtime routing uh, and that tells you everything that I've just mentioned plus more. Um, otherwise, jump onto the forums uh, and ask your questions. Uh, I'm going to upload this to my GitHub project so that you've got all these files. Otherwise, I'll um, see you in the next tutorial.